Good morning, everybody. Let us begin with our metta recital. I hope you all have the papers in front of you. If you have not uh, memorized the discourse, you can look at the paper. Let people can turn on the light at the back. <coughs> May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, Without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother who risks her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a harmless heart. One should cultivate a the world, a heart to bound with loving friendliness, above, below, and more around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, Lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely being here. Not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth and the womb. As we mentioned yesterday, with this <coughs> metta recital, let us begin our practice. At this time, pay total mindful attention to your breathing, paying attention to the breath is extremely important. All the Buddha's practices called Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, Vipassi, Sikhi, Vesabhu, Kagusanda, Konagama, Kasyapa, Gautama, all seven Buddhas found Vipassana path by following the breath. So it has a very long history. Time proven, unmistakable, impeccable. So we use that method for our own liberation. So without any hesitation, reservation or second thought, we pay attention to the breath with full, full confidence. <clears throat> While paying attention to the breath, we notice the breath moving in and out filling our lungs, expanding our abdomen, as we breathe out, contracting the abdomen, contracting the lung area. And once breath leaves our nostrils, it disappears, never can we find it again. Second breath, the next breath, next breath, every breath is like that. 
there is a standard pattern there is nothing to excite it happens very naturally from the time we were born till we breathe our last breath but when we come to meditation we use it paying attention to it become aware of it become aware of what is happening to the breath it generates feelings that is the only way we know that we are breathing through the feeling and that feeling also changes from the moment it starts till its end we mentally perceive it that also changes from moment to moment breath to breath we have attention that attention also is changing we are conscious of it that consciousness also changes what i mention in these five words are five aggregates the breath is breath belongs to form aggregate feeling belongs to feeling aggregate perception belongs to perception aggregate intention or attention belongs to volitional formation aggregate consciousness belongs to consciousness aggregate <coughs> aggregate is collection of things groups form is collection of earth element air element water element fire element feeling belongs to feeling aggregate there are pleasant unpleasant neutral feelings perception is uh, perception through the eye ear nose tongue body and mind pollution also a uh, various type of pollution through the eyes ears nose tongue body and mind <coughs> consciousness also numerous high consciousness ear consciousness and so forth they all are summed up in these five words and they also change as we breathe in and out as they change and disappear there is nothing that we can hold on to holding on to or clinging is mere word but in action you can never do that not physically not psychologically and that will not happen when we see this rising and falling appearing and disappearing in that way desire temporarily can be suspended also there can not be any resentment or anger for anything because mind is totally relaxed calm peaceful the breath is calm relax and peaceful in that calm relax peaceful state resentment does not arise when the resentment is not there everything is calm relax we might feel sleepy when everything is calm temperature is reasonably comfortable no sounds 
air is moving, perhaps <coughs> there may be food in the stomach. All these are good conditions for feeling sleepy or drowsiness. In meditation, it's not that helpful. Although sleepiness is very sweet, we like to welcome it. It doesn't matter how long we sleep in meditation, we will not get up with insight. Therefore, it is not encouraged should not be encouraged. So we have to arouse energy by visualizing very bright light or taking deep breath and holding it for as long as we can and slowly breathing out. If we do it several times, our body warms up sleepiness fades away and then we may have too much energy, excessive energy that is called restlessness along with restlessness and worry also can arise because of thinking of the past. When mind is active, it goes here and there especially to the past experiences and future planning. When the mind is vacillating between past and future like pendulum, we cannot gain concentration. So we have to anchor the wandering mind on our breath keeping it in the present moment. Present moment is not empty moment. The breath is going in and out in the present moment. And we focus the mind on that. Then still we may have some doubts about our success in this practice. To gain confidence, we must think of the very pure, wonderful, marvelous person called Buddha, fully enlightened one, one who has given us this method from his own personal experience. We have to trust that Buddha who followed the Dhamma and made the Dhamma his own teacher and that Dhamma is our teacher as well. We follow the Dhamma. Following the Buddha and Dhamma, holy disciples of the Buddha, attain that state of holiness. <clears throat> Similarly, we follow the Buddha and Dhamma and also Sangha. We too can gain that same state which Buddha guaranteed. He said that if we follow the path, we also can attain the same state. With this assurance, we continue our practice with confidence. Moreover, we also have overcome greed, resentment, sleepiness and drowsiness, restlessness and worry. These are our success. That arouses our confidence, then doubt fades away. 
We need all this greed, resentment, restlessness, and worry, and sleepiness, and drowsiness, and doubt fades away. Our mind naturally becomes even more peaceful, calm, and relaxed. That calm, peaceful, relaxed state of mind arouses joy in us. Niramisa Kiti, spiritual joy, joy without any greed or desire, that is very peaceful. It leads to concentration, it leads to happiness. Happiness leads to concentration. When we gain concentration, we can see those things that we saw earlier much more clearly and see something that we have not seen before very clearly. That is, they are constantly changing at an inconceivable rapidity. They all change. <clears throat> rise and fall, appear and disappear. When that happens, our greed, hatred and delusion fades away, slowly and gradually. That's what we want to achieve, to get rid of our greed, hatred and delusion. Lower those more. With this expectation, goal in mind. Let us spend few minutes in meditation before my talk. After that rest of the day, even rest of your life, continue to practice this way and you really be able to chip off some of these mental impurities and make the mind clean and pure. So anytime you look at the mind, you can be happy because mind is pure and clean.
There is no concentration without wisdom, no wisdom without concentration. One who has both wisdom and concentration is close to peace and emancipation. So, 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 so. Friends, I want to continue our talk on metta. Yesterday we introduced metta and uh, explained the qualities that we should have in us to practice metta and gain full benefit of metta. Today I want to explain the meaning of the discourse, Metta discourse. Friends, we must do anything with understanding in order to get the full benefit of what we do. If we do it just blindly, parroting that does not bring us full benefit of our practice. It, I would not say it is waste of time. It has some very minor benefits. In order to get full benefit, we must understand what we do, everything and anything is like that, especially Dhamma. This Dhamma is a medicine. Buddha asked us to drink this Dhamma medicine to get cure our samsaric suffering. We take physical medicine to get our physical suffering. And therefore, we must do what we do with full understanding. So, especially those who recite this sutta in Pali should know the meaning. We say in English, Whatever living beings there may be, we just recited it, whatever living beings. When you use the word whatever living beings, they are an image of all living beings must exist or arise or generate in our mind, all living beings. Without any discrimination, humans, animals, reptiles and so forth. They all are living beings. This is how the metta practice become boundless. For instance, when we direct our mind towards the eastern direction, eastern direction is boundless. No limit to eastern direction. Living beings in the eastern direction also are boundless, unlimited. Similarly, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest, north, northeast, up and down. When we focus our mind on these ten directions, living beings in these ten directions are unlimited, boundless. That is how this metta practice is called boundless practice. When we say may all living beings, that image must appear in our mind. That's a very powerful image. Without exception, 
the discourses without exception anavashesha anavashesha then ye kej pan bhuta di tasava no uh, सुखी नो वेम नो अंत सभ्य सत्ता भवन सुखी तत्ता ओल बीइंग्स बिकम सुखी नो एंड केम नो मे बी दे हैव हैप्पीनेस एंड सिक्योर खेम मीन सिक्योर देन लेट नो मे ऑल बींग्स बी हैप्पी एंड सिक्योर मे ऑल बींग्स हैव हैप्पी माइंड्स नॉट अनहैप्पी माइंड्स नॉट माइंड विथ फियर नॉट माइंड विथ जेलसी मे ऑल बींग्स हैव हैप्पी माइंड्स then sabbe satta bhavant sukhi satta let no one deceive another no i'm sorry i forgot to mention one thing uh, without any exception long large medium short subtle or gross long large medium subtle or gross subtle beings are beings like microbes they are so tiny but they also like amoeba one single cell beings unicellular beings also life don't have any reservation whenever we think of all beings we cultivate that thought in our mind we cultivate that thought in my our mind and visible or invisible living near or far the being living near is in our body <laughs> around us in this atmosphere far is illimitable infinite far away and born or coming to birth bhuta va sambhave seva being born or coming to birth in wombs in eggs in wherever they are coming to existence in not fully formed but they are growing towards a full living being even at that state is a very subtle state even in that state they are living we want them to live in good health then this we say may all of them be happy let no one deceive another we practice metta towards all living beings at the same time we wish let others not deceive others i don't like to be deceived no i do want to deceive others similarly i don't want you to deceive somebody and that somebody should not 
deceive you. See the 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 so all encompassing metta practice. It's a wonderful practice. And no despise anyone anywhere. <laughs> no despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. Sometimes people ask me, uh, can we wish harm to others without ill will? Because this is no, dis no uh, neither from anger or no ill will should anyone wish harm to others. Can you wish harm to others without ill will? Why they ask this question? Because deep, they don't pay attention to the deep meaning of this. Without ill will, you cannot wish uh, harm to anybody. Then, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should, not, one should cultivate boundless heart. This is something also very difficult for people to conceive, to understand. You, you mothers, you ask, can you love another child exactly like you like love your child? I doubt. Every mother loves her own child more then she loves any other child. That is very natural. And therefore, knowing this, how, why did the Buddha say that just like mother would risk her own life, even at the risk of her own life, protect her own child, even at the risk of her, risk of her own life. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child. She does not do that if there are two children, her child and other child, when both of them are in danger, mother would not go and protect the, or save the other child, leaving her child alone. Mother would protect, save her child first and then save the other child. That is natural thing. Then why the Buddha said this? Friends, our child is our metta. Our child is our metta. It doesn't have a gender. Mother or father who protects the metta that person must protect the metta just like a mother protects her own child. So we practice our metta in such a careful, delicate, mindful way so that we would not damage our metta. Our metta is our child. That way we all can practice it. Then one should cultivate for the entire world a heart of boundless living friendliness above, below and all around. That is horizontal and vertical. The whole universe we take as one large, endless object in which there are all kinds of beings. Friends, this is a thought. This thought we cultivate in our own mind. Metta works for people who practice it 
if they don't practice practice it a method does not work for them and therefore we must understand how we practice it unobstructed without hate or resentment this is another thing whether standing or walking sitting lying down or whenever awake these are the things we do we sit stand walk lie down and sleep even when we go to sleep keep the metta thought in mind all other times and is not sitting on the cushion but all other times talking working thinking we think of metta thought speak with metta thought in mind and act with metta in mind that means we do things in such a altruistic state of mind pure state of mind to make our mind pure and clean so there is no any particular selected posture to cultivate metta most of the time people practice metta while while sitting on the cushion that is only one small fraction of the practice the total practice is in every waking moment to make it more clear buddha said one should develop this mindfulness one should develop this etan satin aditya this is a mindfulness practice we have to be mindful of the suffering we suffer other suffer and therefore we like to be free from suffering they like to be free from suffering and therefore metta thought works for me as well as for others and therefore this is called mindfulness practice and then yesterday i mentioned not falling into erroneous views now i want to mention these erroneous views and uh, first i like to uh, give the full benefit of metta practice uh benefit of metta practice there's a a discourse called metta ani sansa sutta let me see this metta ani sansa sutta benefit of loving friendliness they are i think most of you know that uh some people who have uh, studied the, the sutras know the benefit of metta practice there are 11 benefits one is when you when you practice it all day long sitting standing walking lying down and when we are awake and when we go to bed we keep practicing metta and then since all day long all the time we have been practicing metta when you go to bed we sleep well sukham supati sleep well because mind is very calm relaxed peaceful no resentment 
no anger, no stress. Remember yesterday I mentioned that when we are under stress, we cannot practice metta. When we are free from stress, we can practice metta. And we reduce our stress throughout the day as we are practicing metta. And when you go to bed, sleep will be very comfortable, peaceful. And next morning we can wake up with a peaceful state of mind. So normally when people are very tired, working very hard physically in the office and in various places, when they go to bed they can sleep like a log. But when they wake up in the morning, next morning, they are still a little grouchy and grumpy and until they drink a cup of coffee and you know, spend a few minutes, few hours, they are not uh, you know, ready to talk. Some people even get upset to talk in the morning. They don't like to talk. They had good sleep, but next morning it takes some time. But when you practice metta, you sleep well, get up well. So come pati bhujjati, get up well, and you are fresh like flowers. I have seen little, sometimes some children when they wake up, they come laughing, you know, full of joy because their mind is very pure and clean. So that's what happened when we practice metta, next morning. We don't learn this from books, from teachers, from lectures, from discussions. We learn this from our own personal practice. So practice it. Then napapaka supinam pasati. In between sleep and getting up, you may not have nightmares. Whatever dream you may have, very meaningful, peaceful, premonistic sleeps, dreams, good dreams. Then, as a result of this, now these three benefits, sleep well, get up well, no bad dreams, then what happened? Manusaranam Piyohoti. Then we become very pleasant to human beings. Other human beings like us because we are relaxed, full of metta. Amanusaranam Piyohoti. Amanusame is not human beings. Amanusame is very, you know, certain spirits, even animals. I am pretty sure you have seen animals' behavior towards you when you are angry, when you are upset, when you are sad. Animals are more sensitive to our uh, reactions, our mental states, our hormones, uh, when they release our energy. They are more sensitive than human beings. I have seen this with my own life, in my, in my, I have seen with my eyes. Uh, I had a dog here, called Brown, very faithful, every dog is faithful. I walked with him on this road. One day I saw a couple coming towards me. The man, from a distance, began to shiver, trembling, and dog started sharp charging at him. I stopped it. But her, his wife, she came very nicely, gently, kindly, softly talking to the dog. Dog was very friendly with her. Because her reaction, she was not afraid of the dog. So she did not uh, generate uh, negative hormones, 
it does not emanate from a body and dogs melt it and she became friendly. This happens when we practice metta. Our mind generates very, very hormone, peaceful, that emanates from our body. And so non-humans likes us. Not only that, Devata Rakanti, the spirit, divine beings, spirit, protects us because they also love beings. As I mentioned the other day, Anuruddha, Nandiya, Kimbal, three monks, practice metta, live with metta, stay like they were so friendly like milk and water. Always they are wonderful merging just like milk and water. Buddha, Buddha said sadhu sadhu 18 times. Every time they mentioned how they behave towards each other, how they were practicing friendliness, metta towards each other. Oh, everybody in that village, in that country, in that area, learn to associate with these three monks. And Buddha said, ask the monks, if you want your supporters, the Aikas, to be peaceful and happy, practice metta. We practice metta for you to be happy. <laughs> so metta benefits not only us, but even our associates. So, Devadarati. Then, Nasa Agniva, Sattangva, Visangva, Kamati. Fire, weapon, and poison. Do not affect the person who practice metta. And this is where I want to explain the misunderstanding. Many people think, I mean some people think, who do not understand the deep meaning of these three words, fire, poison, weapon. They think that really they will not be affected by fire, poison and weapon. Suppose you are practicing metta. Somebody is coming behind you and shoot at a very close range. Do you think the bullet doesn't go through your body? Suppose somebody gives you a piece of cake with poison in it. You don't know. It's very juicy very, you know, aromatic, sweet, tasty, you eat. You can fall sick or die because of poison while you are practicing metta. There is a story. I want to tell the story before I explain the meaning. There was a lady called Samavati who was practicing metta not only she was practicing metta, but she had a retreat every week. She had a retreat, which was attended by 500 women. All of them were practicing metta. There was another woman of King Udayana called Magandhya. Magandhya hated the Buddha. Why she hated the Buddha? Because one day when she was not married, her father and mother were trying to find a suitable man to marry her. No man would suit her. So Mahagandhya girl 
whenever a man came to propose to marry her, she would reject her, him. So after a course, the years pass by, as time passed by, she is not getting young every day. So parents want to get rid of her and get, find somebody to marry, marry her. So one day when her father was walking in a forest, he saw a very beautiful, handsome, majestic looking, shiny young person. And she, he ran home and told his wife and said, asked wife to dress up her daughter well. And they, they dressed up the girl and then she was a very exceptionally beautiful girl and brought to this young person. Who is this young person? The Buddha. <laughs> and the father of this girl said, presenting the, his, his daughter to him, he said, this is my daughter, don't you like to marry, him? marry her? So Buddha rejected her. He used very strong terms. He said, this one kama arati in rati in chanaho si kama ngati papi meturasmi kime vida mutta karisa punna pada pina positum na iche. Having seen tanha rati raga, three divine names, I didn't have a scruple of lust towards them. How much less lust do I have to this woman full of impurities? She got very offended. She got very angry. I'm so beautiful. And I rejected all men. Now this man, he was so praised, so proud that he rejects me. So she wanted to take revenge of the Buddha. Buddha was so great, noble, pure, enlightened, nobody can do any harm to him. Then the Mahagandhya thought, if she hurt somebody who prays by the Buddha, then Buddha would get hurt, she thought. Buddha would not get hurt by anything. Anyway, when Mahasamavat then finally Udayana, King Udayana, married this girl, Madhandya. King can marry any number of women whom they like. So he had now Vasuladatta, Mahagandhya, Samavati and so forth. Then Samavati was practicing metta and Buddha declared the Samavati among Etadagambike Mama Gihi Savikana Metta Vihari Nayata Samavati. He said, Monks among lay meditating women, number one is Samavati. Among lay meditating women, Samavati is number one. Because she practiced, she practiced Metta so well and taught Metta retreat, 500 women, she was so popular. 500 women attended her retreats and therefore every week she had a retreat, Netta retreat. One day, Mahagandhya did many, many things to hurt her. The whole list of things, I don't want to mention all of them. The last thing she did was when all Mahagandhya, Samavati and all other 500 women were meditating, practicing Metta, she got, Mahagandhya got her uncle, other relatives, surrounded the building and set fire to the building. Everybody died, including Samavati. Why practicing metta? 
So the fire affects people practicing metta. But when Sama, when everybody was dying, Samavati loudly said, Sisters, sisters, this is the time we must practice metta. Don't have one iota of anger in your mind. Fill your mind with metta. And Buddha said, they all practiced metta while they were dying, without having any anger in them. So the fire, poison, weapon, are the names for greed, hatred and delusion. Not outside fire, not outside poison, not outside weapon, but inside fire, poison, weapon. There is a discourse in our Vandana book, Aditya Pariyaya Sutta. Buddha said, because eyes are on fire, these eyes are on fire, ears are on fire, nose is on fire, tongue is on fire, body is on fire, mind is on fire. Fire of what? Jatya, jaraya, marane, soke, parde, dukke, domanasi, upaya, se. Raga, gina, dosa, gina, moha, gina. Eleven fires. We have eleven fires. What are the eleven fires? Greed, hatred, delusion. Three. Then, jati, jara, marana, soka, paridev, dukkha, domanasa, upayas. Eleven fires. We are burning with these fires. What are they? Greed, hatred, delusion, birth, growth, decay, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. These are the fires. They are happening to us. Birth, growth, decay, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair plus greed, hatred and delusion. These are the fires. Birth is already taken, taken place, growth is taking place all the time, decay is taking place all the time, we fall anytime, anytime, but sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair, greed, hatred and delusion, these eight we can avoid. Greed we can avoid, hatred we can avoid, delusion we can avoid, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair we can avoid, overcome when we practice metta. That is how we have to understand the meaning of the practice of metta. Don't think, I mean, today some people think, some people think, if I practice metta, no, no snake will bite, uh, uh, no, of course there was a monk at the time of the Buddha who died of snake bite. Then other monks came and reported to the Buddha. And Buddha said, monks, this bhikkhu who died of snake bite, if he practice metta, a snake will not bite. That is true. Why and how? If you do not disturb a snake by stepping on it or poking or smoke with some sticks and so forth and let him come and go, a snake does not hurt you. A snake hurt you out of fear. 
you know, we all have this instinct of running or fighting. Fight, fright or fight. That is our instinct. Out of fear. When you practice metta, if a snake comes, if you stay quietly, the snake will not bite you. If you become nervous, struggle, try to attack, immediately the snake will bite you. So when you practice metta, you have 100% confidence in yourself, 100% confidence in metta practice, protecting like your own little child, like a mother protecting her own child. If you practice your metta, protect your metta, the snake does not bite. So, it's called Khanda Paritta. Paritta Sutta, Paritta book. So, there is a discourse that we are supposed to practice in order to protect ourselves from snake bite. That means we charge our mind with metta and emanate positive, peaceful vibration. When peaceful vibration emanates from our body, all the environment, immediate environment become very calm, relaxed, peaceful. I am pretty sure you might have seen, if your child, little baby, who doesn't understand anything, if you put that baby on your lap, when you are very calm, relaxed and peaceful, the baby is very peaceful, sleeping very well. If you are agitated, angry, full of tension and so forth, even that little baby doesn't feel comfortable. Why? Because we generate, we emanate, our vibrations is negative. When we practice, our vibration is very wholesome, positive. Devata Rakhanti, animal protects us, divine being protects us. Then, Tuvatan Chitam Samadhi, the Nasa Agiva Satyam also, Visama Kamati, Tuvatan Chitam Samadhi Yati. When we practice Metta, we gain concentration very quickly. Actually, when you practice jhana meditation, metta is the stepping stone to gaining concentration. When you practice metta, in your mind, you are very quiet, calm, peaceful, relaxed, serene, and you gain concentration very quickly, easily. Mukhavarno Vipasidati. Our face, the facial expressions becomes pleasant. Appearance, you know, when we are angry, we all know, when we are angry, no matter how handsome, how beautiful the person is, when the person is angry, you can see the anger on the face. Right? You can see it. You don't have to have a great degree, university degree, or great scientific education to, to understand that this person is angry. Just by one look at the person, you can tell the person is angry. Similarly, when the mind is pure, clean, full of metta, you can see on the face, the person has clear mind, 
fear mind, metta mind. When you practice metta, other three also come together. What are the other three? Karuna, Mudita, Upekka. Wherever the Buddha mentioned metta, he mentioned the other three as well. See the power of each of them. I mentioned only metta. Karuna also. Karuna means compassion. Compassion also has the same power. Appreciate joy has the same power. Equanimity has the same power. Therefore, Asamu Lokalan Karoti. When we die, we die without confusion. You know, that's a wonderful thing. We don't want to die with confused state of mind. When we die with confused state of mind, death itself is miserable. After death, where we will be born, we will be unpleasant place. We will be reborn on unpleasant place. And therefore, Asambhullo Kalankaroti. If metta practice, metta practice can be used as mindfulness practice. How? Metta is created in the mind. Yankinj uh, Abhisankata Abhisante Chetetan Sabbanta Nirodhamma. There is a discourse called in Majjim Nikai called Attaka Nagara Sutta. They are Vindabhal Ananda mentioned that whatever mentally create, not only Ananda, even the Ananda learned it from the Buddha. Buddha said, whatever we create in the mind, or whatever mentally created, is subject to change. Whatever mentally created, it is subject to change. That is impermanent. The moment we see impermanence, we switch on to mindfulness practice. Because in mindfulness, number one, the central theme of mindfulness practice is impermanence, anicca. Seeing anicca, practice, seeing impermanence of everything, all conditioned things. So metta is one of the conditioned things. Metta itself, metta practice itself is unconditional, but metta itself is conditioned, subject to change. And therefore, Buddha said, Uttaring Appati Vijyanto Brahmalu Koko Gopako Hoti. Uttaring Appati Vijyanto means when you do not, if you have not attained stream entry, once return and never return and arahant to, to the practice of metta, if you do not, have not attained this uh, super normal state, then as a result of metta practice, you will be reborn in Brahma realm. Uttaring Appativijantu Brahma Loko Gohati. That is the last benefit of practice of metta. Now, friends, there are many more things to say about metta practice. But uh, you heard this gong. <laughs> so we have to end the talk. And I wish you all practice metta and see this benefit for yourself. Don't believe what I said. You believe your own practice and you believe your own results and you experience results and have a wonderful, wonderful day and life. Thank you.